What's up, y'all? First time ever doing this. We'll see how it goes, see if anyone likes it. We'll continue to do it. So, um, obviously you see me, I'm making baits. These are, uh, right now I'm just focusing on swim baits for uh, just actually a gas station down the street. They buy from, from me for ice fishing stuff in the winter. And then when spring rolls around, they buy my summer baits. So, I've never really done a video or, or anything. Obviously, my name's Cody Henley. Uh, my company is called Henley Custom Lures. I'm out of Camas, Utah. I've been doing this maybe six months. Well, it all actually happened from when I hurt my back. and I, I was an electrician for a while, for a good while, actually. And uh, ended up having to quit my job. And, now I'm doing something else that I love. I'm gonna talk about love. Good deal. This is all that I ever do, if I'm being honest, is fishing and making fishing lures. That's near about all uh, you'll catch me do. My wife gets mad at me sometimes. It's been a little too much time. So this is a 3.8 inch Kitek style. I don't know if you can see that. Most of y'all should know about swim baits or anything with bass fishing. Here in Utah, we don't have a, well we do. There are a lot of big fish here, but with Northern strain bass, they are a little bit smaller, especially with smallmouth. We have a lot of people that target smallmouth and most people love to throw little bitty swim baits. So, normally I wouldn't be making no three inch swim baits for, for large mouth. But down at the store, from my house is the only bait shop around for two, two pretty big small mouth fisheries here in Utah. So, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make them about 20 bags of this. Probably won't carry y'all through everything. Some people ask, you know, like, how do you make baits? What do you do? Like, what's, what, do, what process does it take? How long does it take? So, so far, this, uh, I'm shooting a white swim bait. White with a little bit of pearls in them. This is it right here. It's in a two cup container. It starts off in a white liquid form. From there, I heat it up in the microwave. Usually like three to six minutes, depending on how much fluid you have. And I get it to 350 degrees. Once it hits 350 degrees, it turns clear. And then it kind of turns over and like, if you don't hit 350 degrees, it won't set up. Nothing will actually work. It, it's actually a bummer, but it took me a little while to figure that out if we're being honest. So I'm in the process of getting all these molds you know, kind of my fan favorite mold. Like, probably my favorite one is my custom built Ronnie Ripper. And yeah, we just call them Rippers. They're four inches. They're kind of based off the Rage Menace. I love a Rage Menace. I love a Rage Bug too. I got something else coming in designing for the bug. We'll see how that goes. But most of these are just regular old molds that most people have. And that's what, what I kind of want. I kind of want to be different. You know, I want to have stuff that people don't have. But it ain't cheap. It ain't cheap at all. I'll probably give you a walk around the shop, let y'all look at kind of the shop. And just wanted to walk y'all through and show y'all everything that does go into it. It's not, I mean, it ain't, it ain't a big process. But it's definitely some steps. You know, I have, I wouldn't say every color, but I have a lot of colors. Probably, probably everything. Or you can make everything if I don't have it. I'm mixing other colors.
I ain't no Chris Jones. I ain't that good yet. I'll give it to him. He, he makes some good baits, man. He, he is impressive when it comes to that stuff. Man. While that's curing, I'll give you all a little tour. Well, apparently I can't turn the phone around. So here's kind of my setup with my little compressor and all the molds. I used to hang them there, but I upgraded from that. There's my pucks and a lot of like extra plastics that I can reuse or whatever may, whatever I need to do. And then here's kind of my board of everything. We call this the junk table. It's usually cleaner than that. I don't know what happened. It always happens. So I, when I first started out, these were my drawers that I filled up. Let's see, here's a rainbow trout Ned Riggs. That's some ice fishing stuff. I, I kind of store a lot of my ice fishing stuff in here. If you, Yeah, a lot of it. And there's 350 bags that I have to stock the rest of the stores. It's kind of everything though. My Plastisol, my microwaves, my cooling. They say you always put it back up in water when you're, uh, you want your baits to kind of cool off. And it definitely works faster. What I do is, once I'm done shooting, let everything cool off in there. I get to a stopping point and my bucket fills up. Normally my bucket fills up. Once the bucket fills up, I just empty everything out. And then I go hang everything up on the wall. And then once we get to the wall, you got about 24 to 36 hours, depending on what plastisol you use. My absolute favorite in the beginning was do it. And then I got a lot deeper into it and realized that do it wasn't really the best. So now I'm using, uh, it's called Calhoun. Calhoun Plastisol. Literally has some of the best salt suspension there is. Like your salt sits in the middle. You don't have to keep stirring it and suck it up real fast. Like it's, it is just all around the better Plastisol. Things get a little messy too, so it's super nice. Like all this that I have is it's super hot, it burns. All this that comes out, there's just a big pile of it from leftovers from me shooting in swim bait. I get to reuse everything pretty much. As long as whites are kind of hard, because if the white gets like a black or any like other colors on it, obviously it's kind of ruined. So it gets pretty messy. So that, once I'm done shooting, I go through and make sure like, was it okay? Like, does it have any black stuff on it or white stuff? I mean, not white stuff or just other colors or, cause then the flakes get in here, it's like hard to get them out. So you have to like clean the table off, have to wipe down the table every time I shoot. Looks like I'm just shooting crappy cause y'all are here, but, or I'm videoing myself. That seems to, to be what's happening. So that's kind of a walkthrough of everything I do. Like all these are different molds. Like I have tons of, tons of different styles. My plan is to get replicas of those molds over and over again. So I just can sit there and shoot it with my big 10 ounce injectors, you know, and shoot it with the big injectors. Then I won't have to shoot with little four ounces, you know, but obviously I'm not there yet. <laughs> One of these molds costs hundred to two hundred dollars depending on where you're getting them from. But I will say it's, it's pretty awesome. Like it's, it's cool to see how they're made. Like you can make any style, any color, any sparkle that you want, glitter, flake, whatever you want to call it. You can literally put anything in here. I think that's kind of the coolest thing. Like you can literally create anything that you want. Like if you have a color that you love, but you're like, dang, I wish you had purple flake in it. Cool, I got them. I got probably 150 flakes right there. And another 100 different flakes over there. So you can do anything. It's kind of, it's kind of fun. It was a lot funner until it became a job. See, like there's a flake right there. I pull it out, and then I have a sweep later. <laughs> I 
that's really it. That's my setup. What's up? Peace out.